Good evening, everyone. Um, so welcome to our PVSD board meeting. We do have translation available in Spanish. So um, if you need that support, please see Orania Lopez. So tenemos traducción en español. Si necesita de este servicio, por favor, pase con Orania Lopez. And if you would like to speak to an item on the agenda, please complete a speaker card and hand it to Alicia Jimenez prior to the start of the agenda item. Um, each speaker will have two minutes. Um, so we will move on to item 3.2, our Pledge of Allegiance. And I will ask Trustee Scow to please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, 
in liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And so we will move on to our superintendent comments and our acting superintendent Clint Rucker will make a few comments. Thank you, President Holm, and thank you, Board of Trustees. Um, I'll make it very brief because I know we have a short meeting and hopefully we can keep it a little bit short and everyone can actually go home and enjoy dinner with their loved ones. Um, just want to say thank you to everybody for being here and really thank you to the board for um, being supportive during this time. Thank you especially to President Holm. You've been super kind. Thank you, Vice President Acosta and uh, Trustee DeSerpa for helping me through uh, the agenda setting, which was new to me, and I think we got through it okay, and I just appreciate all of you being supportive and being there. And again, thank you to all of my staff um, who was understanding in the time of having to have a little bit more on my plate and try and adapt. Very excited to see that we could potentially have an interim moving forward, because as much as I love the district and love being as supportive as possible, I love numbers, and I want to go back to my numbers. I, I do love that. So really, that's my passion and where I want to be, but I do appreciate the board for um, letting me you know, ensure that the district kept moving forward. So thank you all. Thank you all for being here. Thank you. Um, moving on to our governing board comments. Um, so this is our opportunity for each uh, board member to make a few comments, and we'll start with Trustee Flores. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for coming out tonight during your summer. Um, I did not have any committee meetings this, this the, within the last few weeks, but I did attend Watsonville High School football's fundraiser that they had the, last weekend at the high school, and it was amazing to see the turnout and to see the community come together. And I hope more of our um, campuses can do, um, do this and get more of the community involved. And I just thank... Um, them for putting that on and the invite to be able to participate in that. Thank you. Vice President Acosta. Um, I'll keep it short and brief as well. I, well, other than the one committee meeting with our acting superintendent, um, which he did very well in, and I want to also take the moment to thank you, Clint, for stepping up to the leadership um, for, oops, on behalf of the board and this district and our community during this time. And um, I just hope everyone had a wonderful um, and festive uh, 4th of July. I can't believe that was just barely a week ago yesterday. So here we are. We're fast moving through summer. So thank you. Trustee DeSerpa. Thank you. I celebrated Independence Day by walking um, in the parade, both in Aptos and Watsonville, alongside um, Trustee Holm, President Holm. It was a, and actually, Trustee Scow joined us in Watsonville. It was a beautiful, beautiful day, and it's one of my favorite days of the year. So thank you. Trustee Soto. Yeah, good evening. Uh, thank you for attending tonight. And uh, I just want to extend a uh, thank you to Clint for stepping up and filling the role uh, and taking the reins. And from the sounds of things, we have some uh, decisions to make with some other uh, leadership position so it's we're gonna we're, we're gonna have our hands full from here on out for the next few meetings so but thanks again Clint yes good evening everybody thanks for being here and thanks to all those who watch our meetings on YouTube I uh, had a great time marching with board president Holm and trustee de Serpa the Watsonville parade in front of uh, our beautiful school bus drive by our very own Stacy Mendoza uh, so that was a big uh, Hooten, one of the highlights of the parade, no doubt. Uh, also, congrats to Watsonville High School Assistant Principal Gregorio for a very successful event over the weekend. That was a lot of fun to be there. Um, and just thanks to our entire team, management team, and colleagues on the board. A lot of uh, good things are happening, a lot of hires. Uh, very exciting to see that in our district. And I'm looking forward to tonight. Thank you. Thank you. And yes, um, walking in the, the two parades was, um, it's, it's great to be out in the community and, and see folks and see the celebrations. And I also just wanted to express my appreciation for all the district staff and their, um, their work during this transition time. You know, the, Clint, I appreciate the work that you're doing. Um, and then everybody who is, you know, all the outreach that's happening um, the feedback that we're getting about the various processes, um, it's, it's so important. I appreciate the input and just all the work that is going on to make sure that things are running smoothly 
Um, so thank you to everybody um, and to my fellow trustees. I just want to express my appreciation for the communication and professionalism. Um, so thank you. Oh, uh, Trustee Dodge Jr., did you have any comments? Thank you, everybody, for being here. Good evening. I uh, just wanted to quickly say, you know, we had a, a good fundraiser at Watson High this weekend. You know, Trustee Scott was there. I think I'm, I missed Trustee Flores, but I just wanted to thank the Watson High staff, you know, everybody that brought their cars, uh, Coach Girl Girl, thank you. Just, just a lot of thanks, Watson Hall writers, um, Watson Hall, Paula, just, everybody, you know, all the pop-ups and everybody just thank you, you know. Too many names to name. I, I, I saw you there, and I just want to say thank you, Watson Hall. PV was, you know, PV was D and everybody who was able to attend. So thank you. All right, moving on to uh, approval of the agenda. Can I have a motion to approve the agenda? I make a motion to approve the agenda. A second. I have a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries seven zero. Moving on to item five point one, approval of the June twenty eighth, twenty twenty three board meeting minutes. Can I have a motion? Okay, I have a motion. Can I have a, a second? second? I have a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 7-0. Um, item 5.2, approval of the July 3rd, 2023 board meeting minutes. Can I have a motion? Make a motion. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? second. I have a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 7-0. We will move on to item 6.1, public comment. So this is our opportunity for members of the public to address issues that are not on the agenda. Um, do we have any public comments? We do, we have one, and um, that would be Chris Webb. And um, just to reiterate what President Holmes said, I'd just like to remind anyone, if you have any um, speaker cards for our other items, they need to be put in before that action item starts. Good evening. Uh, I just wanted to first off say at the, I think it was the ju the first June meeting, I, I appreciated uh, the PVFT remarks. Um, they were reflecting on the connection between higher um, occurrence of SPED students in our district and pesticides. And I have seen other data that show the air monitors at Ohlone for the last decade have shown beyond what safe levels of air pesticide pollution. So I feel like we need to follow up on that. Like that's something where if we're gonna hire a consultant, I'd be, I would support hiring a consultant to study what is the exposure to all our students district wide. I think we should start adding purifiers. This is like a green team thing, I think. We should add purifiers, or not purifiers, uh, monitors in like a radius extending from Maloney, like slowly over time. We need to leave the state because the state is I don't feel um, living up to their responsibilities in terms of protecting public health. Um, also, I want to commend or say that at the last May meeting, um, a math teacher came up. They talked about how the old assistant superintendents of your had more of an ongoing dialogue with staffs, and I agree with that. And I feel like we need that. Uh, we need that for just approved achievement, better culture overall. Um, I'm, I'm a little worried that like, even though there's, you know, I've got the same kind of uh, change that like the PV community has in that like new superintendent, new new principal. Um, like I do feel it's like an inflection point and in in, inflection point and I'm, I'm worried that we won't seize it to change the culture to be more collaborative so that uh, we don't just say together we rise like I feel it. And like, I also feel like, and it should be okay to, to care uh, with the students. I feel like there's been times where if you're, uh, if you're doing your job and then like it's, it reflects poorly on maybe others who put a policy that wasn't fully thought out because they, they don't know, then um, it can lead to a not the best environment. Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving on to our employee organization comments. So now it's time we're here from our employee organizations and each will have five minutes, uh, starting with uh, PVFT. 
Good evening. Um, Nelly Vaquera Boggs, president for PBFT. Uh, it's summertime. <laughs> um, and I really, really hope that many of our teachers are out summering. Um, I did go to a um, one of our sites uh, just to check in with um, one of my colleagues that I work with um, in the office, Roddy. She taught summer school. And so I got to see the joy at Minty White. Um, they were having a carnival that day. It was a lot of fun. I worked summer school for many, many years um, through the ALAS program. Uh, it's migrant ed. Uh, and it's just a wonderful time because you get to incorporate more arts um, and more interaction amongst the entire site um, than our academic year. So, um, you know, we look forward to moving through this summer. It's going too fast, but we look forward to moving forward with our board and the district in its search for a um, superintendent who is going to fill some pretty tall heels. Um, and uh, and some you know important aspects of what we are we as a union are looking for in a leader of our district. Um, you've heard us say that we want to be a part of this process. Um, is you've already heard me say bilingual is one of the major connectors for our community of learners, our families, and the leadership of this district. Um, but also a person who's going to truly listen to the various stakeholders. Um, the 2,300 people that are employed by this district, our CSEA brothers and sisters, um, management, and the PBFT, um, we all work to not only as your hashtag this last year was to lift up, um, ours has always been <laughs> Together We Rise, and that means together everybody. Um, and we rise with our students. We have to be whole every single day. Um, and part of that wholeness is ensuring that we have a leader who is listening to the needs and is making moves to make it sustainable, to make it a reality. In the past many years, the workload has become unsustainable. And um, we have felt it. And I wanna give kudos to our human resources department who has been um, working diligently um, to get the positions out and filled as much as, as best they can. There are still some positions, but we're, you know, we're not going to start with like 50 vacancies. So that's like, whew. Um, so we are definitely, I'm thankful knowing that. Um, I attended an employee orientation for um, on incoming certificated non-management, the people we represent. And there was a, a pretty good crowd of some really, really wonderful people. So moving forward, we look forward to working with you in this search. Um, I look forward to working with Murray Sheckman. Um, I was a secondary teacher and uh, so he was the an assistant soup for I think secondary at the time because that's I would see him. Um, my husband and I both got to work with him, um, and you know he was present. Uh, and so I think another aspect of what we're looking for in lead in our in leadership is a person who is going to be present. So thank you very much. Um, have a great evening. All right. Do we have anyone from CSEA? Hey, how's everyone doing? Board of Trustees, Cabinet. Surprised to see all the directors here. Michelle's gone. <laughs> but anyways, um, our sun shines up. I'm sure you guys have seen it. I'm looking for some support in that. Um, also, appreciate Clint stepping up, filling some big shoes or heels. And you know what? It's a new year, new school year. I want a good, clean, fresh start. Hopefully everything goes well. And also, myself, a lot of my members are in support of Murray coming in, sitting in as interim superintendent. And we support him 100%. And 
I'd like to actually meet them one day. I am sure sooner than later. And hopefully I could have those meetings with them more often. All right, thank you. Thank you. Do we, do we have anyone from Favam? I have a few photos for you. Good evening, Board of Trustees, President Holm, Superintendent Rucker. My name is Angelica Renteria. I'm the director of the Migrant Season Head Start Program, and I'm happy to be here representing Pepin. I have a couple of program highlights. No, it's not. On June 20, 21, and 22, we hosted the National Family Child Care Forum, where many Head Start programs from ac across the country gathered to share effective practices. In the goal of this event is um, to be able to showcase the family child care home model for other programs that are new to the, to, the, to, the, to the concept or who might be interested in implementing this type of um, delivery model in the future. We had about 70 participants, and those 70 participants had the opportunity to visit 30 family child care homes in Santa Cruz County and Monterey County. They talked about how impressed they were with the learning environments. They talked about how safe spaces are set up in very small areas in a very creative way. They also had the opportunity to observe inclusive practices, opportunities for interaction and language development, as well as curriculum implementation. Also speaking of curriculum implementation, this month at the local committee meetings, the families that are attending can learn firsthand of curriculum practices. Teachers have the opportunity to share activities and materials, and as the parents complete the activities uh, utilizing simple materials, they learn how learning takes place in the classrooms. As you can see in the pictures, families are very engaged and excited. This is Soloni, this is Hyde, and Calabasas. Thank you. Thank you. We have one public speaker to this item, uh, Chris Webb. Yeah, I just have um, one request of, of Pavam, and that's in light of some of the experiences I've had with um, admin in the last couple of years and I, I don't want it to take a semester for us to decide that students shouldn't wear a tire that promotes any kind of drug and um, in the past sometimes people have admin have had to get into situations where they're forced to take a step that didn't have to like eventually their hand was forced in a way so I think we can if we can have a culture where we don't um, that just doesn't come up. This is one of my favorite rugby jerseys, but I've never worn it to school because it even has my name and everything. I, I don't wear it to school because of reasons I feel like you are aware of. So I feel like if, it, if you wouldn't want it from your staff, um, then you probably it's not good for the students and like these things eventually they lead up and we, it's better to act ahead of time, I think. So thank you, have a good evening. All right, do we have anyone from CWA? Not today? All right. So going on to item 8.1, uh, approved contract for interim superintendent. I will be presenting this item. So we received uh, resumes and cover letters from a number of qualified individuals. And I wanna take a moment to express my gratitude for you know, to everyone who either submitted their name or you know, we had people who suggested people. This process demonstrated what a wealth of talent and dedication that we have in our district. In our special board meeting about this process, we stated that we would conduct interviews if the board could not reach a consensus around a candidate. As we deliberated, 
it quickly became clear that consensus was possible. With Mr. Sheckman, we have an opportunity to work with a highly experienced educator who is very familiar with our district, who is connected to our community and can take on this role in a way that allows our programs to continue without interruption as we embark on the process of searching for a permanent superintendent. With direction from the board, I worked with legal counsel to negotiate a contract with Mr. Sheckman, which we are submitting for your approval this evening. In short, the district will consider approving uh, Marie Sheckman's employment agreement as interim superintendent um, of the Pajaro Valley Unified School District. And a summary of the financial terms are as follows. So one, the, the term of his employment as interim superintendent will be from July 17th, 2023, and terminating on July, or in June 30th, 2024. And then two, the base salary of the interim superintendent during the term will be $1,000 per day. Three, the interim superintendent will be provided with the same health and welfare benefits that are provided to other district certificated management employees. Four, the district will reimburse the interim superintendent's actual and necessary business expenses, including expenses associated with attending professional meetings and conferences. Um, seven, the interim superintendent will have a work year of 220 days, excluding Saturdays, Sundays, and holidays. Eight, the interim superintendent shall be entitled to one sick leave day per month. Nine, the interim superintendent shall be entitled to an automobile allowance of 300 per month and a cell phone allowance of 100 per month. And 10, the board may terminate, termi terminate this interim superintendent for any reason whatsoever by providing 30 days advance written notice. Um, the full contract is available on board docs. But that is the summary and I respectfully request your approval. Do we have any public speakers to this item? We have none. All right. Do we have any questions or discussion from the board? <clears throat> Just for cl clarification, when we were negotiating um, the salary, is that, um, <laughs> is that a pretty standard salary for an interim okay. superintendent? My understanding is yes. Okay, thank you. I'll make a motion to approve um, uh, Murray Sheckman as our interim superintendent. I have a first, I have a second. I'll second, and I also just want to thank you, Dr. Holm, for your work in shepherding in this process and all my colleagues on the board. Um, I'm very optimistic, and uh, I think that we're in good shape, and we're going to keep going in good shape. So thank Great. you for your work. You're welcome. Thank you. So, President Holm, I just, with respect to how important of a decision this is, I will respectfully ask that we could roll call the vote. You have your first and second. All right. gonna, if you're calling for the vote now, if there's no further discussion, and this table is not bolted down. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, so, doing the roll call vote, uh, Lisa, can you do that? Uh, did, oh, yeah. Danny, did you have? Oh, okay. Um. I would just like to say. I've known Mr. Murray Sheckman since my days at E Hall a long time ago, and I trust Mr. Murray Sheckman. And during this process, which was a good process that we had, you know, we've done our best to have special meetings. Um, we had a meeting at E Hall where I believe it was, you know, er, you know where everybody could attend. You know, I, I've talked to people throughout the district. That I, that I had good things to say about Murray Sheckman. You know, I know CACA members are happy with the choice, and I, I know a lot of people of Watsonville um, throughout the district support Murray Sheckman, and I will support Murray Sheckman, and I look forward to working with them as a trustee, but as a member of Watsonville and a student of the schools that I represent, and I continue to listen to people in my area and I support this too. So thank you. I was just, I just wanted to get that in before you did that, but if anybody else had a comment. That's, um, I just wanted to take a moment and note um, and um, thank our um, president, trustee Dr. Holm, for her leadership during this time, as well as our acting superintendent, Clint Rucker, um, agenda setting committee as well, Trustee DeSerpa. Um, 
lots of things had to move at points quickly to make meetings happen um, in, in the absence of um, Dr. Rodriguez and um, President Trustee Dr. Holm did that very well, worked diligently with our legal counsel. I'm appreciative to our legal counsel, Sarah Katz as well, for her advice and counseling to the board during this time um, and this decision making because pretty much for six of us up here, this is new. Um, sorry, Kim, to date you. Um, on that. <laughs> but, um, you know, it, with experience is wisdom, okay? So, but um, I just really wanted to thank you, President, Trustee Dr. Holman. That's a lot of words to get your name out <laughs> um, for your leadership. I am appreciative of it, so thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Uh, ready? You are ready. <laughs> I'm ready for the roll call vote. Trustee Serpa. Aye. Trustee Soto. Aye. Trustee Flores. Aye. Trustee Scow. Aye. Trustee Daniel Dodge Jr. Aye. Vice President Georgia Acosta. Aye. President Jen Jennifer Holm. Aye. The motion passes unanimously. Wonderful. Congratulations, Mr. Shecklin. Did, did you wish to address the board? Wow, seven of <laughs> I, I, I do. Um, it looks, it sounds like my voice will show up with you folks a, a few seconds after I speak. Um, we're here, we hear it's, you. It's actually pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. Okay. Um, I'm just living in a world of gratitude. I planned this vacation probably six months ago. Otherwise, I'd be sitting there with you. I've read um, some just beautiful things in... Uh, posts and Facebook. I don't do Facebook, but I'm part of your, our community, and I'm really grateful, and this is a real challenge and honor. I look forward to being in the office and on school campuses beginning Monday. We get home Sunday night. I'll take my dog for a walk, and I'll return with delight to the PBUSD. And my final comment is simply to echo some of the words that were already said. The young man who spoke and used the term collaborative, talked about culture, our two union representatives who talked about an environment where people work together, and I believe I believe we have a good match, and I'm really happy to be back. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, and congratulations. All right. Thank you, President Hong. All right. Well, yay. Um, moving on to item 8.2, selection of superintendent search firm presentations uh, for uh, permanent superintendent by leadership associates in McPherson and Jacobson, LLC. Clint. Yes, thank you, President Holm, Board of Trustees. Um, as many of you remember, we had the two firms come to our last board meeting, which was the June 28th board meeting. They did do a presentation, explain the services that they provide. Those firms, um, again, gave those presentations. Board were able to ask some questions, but it was asked that the actual action item be moved to this next meeting so that they could have some time to read over the presentations, really see what was to offer. Um, in that process, we also found that it would be helpful to have those firms here again to answer any questions. We do have one attending um, leadership and associates via Zoom, and I believe McPherson is here uh, in person, was able to make it down here for us. So 
At this time, I'm leaving the board to make the decision to select one of the firms. We have both contracts attached to the item, so you can see the contracts that would be available for both firms. The presentations have already been done, but this is a time for the board to ask any questions of the firms, if there's any follow-up still needed, and then make a final decision on selecting a firm to begin our search for our superintendent. Thank you. Do we have any public speakers to this item? We have none. Do we have any discussion from the board? Um, any questions for our firms? Trustee Flores? I'll just start by saying that um, I want to thank both firms for their presentations. And um, I looked over both of them. They're very similar. I know which one I would probably lean more towards. but. I want to say thank you, and I just I look forward to working with them to find our future superintendent. All right. Um, I will just echo that and thank both firms. I'm not sure if the other one, if Le um, leadership and associates, is on on Zoom yet with us, but um, if not, they can listen to me on rewind. Um, but uh, and and also thank McPherson and Jacobson for being here this evening to answer any possible additional questions that have come up from the board because sometimes you know and that's part of the process that we'll get a report and discussion and then often we vote on things at a next meeting and it does give that lag time to sort of process everything and really get some perspective and also hear input from others so um, thank you for being your presentations at our second to last meeting with our regular last meeting and for being here this evening I appreciate it Anything from that end of the table? Well, I just echo and thank you um, for giving us the time that you've given us already. And I'm sorry we had to bring you back in for a second um, presentation or to answer any questions, which it appears that the board doesn't really have any extra questions. So I think we're ready to make a decision, right? <coughs> Sounds like it. Does somebody <coughs> want to make a motion? <coughs> well, I think the next step would be for somebody to make a motion about which group that <coughs> is, and if the motion if people want that, then there'll be a vote. If people don't, then the motion can just fail, correct? I'm willing to make a motion for the, the firm that I felt that I would, you know, can see us working with, and that would be Leadership and Associates. Okay. I'll second. Any further discussion? I'll ask you to roll call the vote. <laughs> I. I wanted to say that um, I felt both presentations were great. I felt that we would be in good hands with either group. I did get a lot of feedback from my constituents about uh, leadership and associates that that was my constituents preference. I think I have it under control. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so I've already said thanks to both. And um, I'm pretty much going to echo what um, Trustee Holmes says. Most of the feedback I've gotten from those that have reached out to me to have a care or say in the matter <clears throat> have echoed leadership and associates. Um, and some of the feedback on that, just to add to it, is um, as someone who's been a business owner for decades and teaches personal and professional responsible business practices at one, our local university, and also not just business principles, but also ethics um, and equity, one of the concerns that was echoed that I have to, to say is there's something that <clears throat> we call in business an arms-length transaction. And 
it's important to have that sort of distance. And there was concerns about the firm that just took our superintendent from us, being the firm to represent the next potential superintendent we'll have. And so it's sort of that thing in life that sometimes you say, you know, you, you know, legally you can do something, but how does it also look ethically and morally? And there, that can get called into question. And just, you know, just because we can do something doesn't always mean we should. Um, and so that's really, for me, been a leading point as well. I, I feel both presentations were wonderful, very professional, um, but I am, um, that's uh, pretty much why my decision is to vote for leadership and associates and to have second Trustee Flores's motion. <coughs> I, I do want to add that one thing that I really did appreciate about the McPherson uh, presentation <laughs> was that it was so clear. And I, I did appreciate how much I knew every step and I felt it was very, very clear. I, I, I knew exactly the process. I did like that quite a bit. I, <clears throat> I'm sorry. Now that I'm over my coughing attack, I think officially. Sorry, that distracted me a little bit in my thought process. I know I've already seconded um, Trustee Flores's motion, but something that I want to point out of a concern that I have, um, and it's also been brought to our attention by our union, two union leaderships who both presidents are here this evening, um, that I have um, really want to make sure that this process going forward um, is very well thought out and well planned and that has very active community involvement where we're, we're really considering our stakeholders, not just all of our, you know, our cabinet management, our certificated and classified management, our confidential employees, our represented employees through both of our unions. I mean, we, we have a serious duty as trustees. We are the second largest employer in this county, the largest employer in the city of Watsonville. We have a real duty to these employees um, and to have them be a part of the process. We also have that duty to our other stakeholders, our students, their parents, their families, and I think it is really important to have them be an integral part of this process. And I know that we're going to work the scope out with whichever firm. I know you have a first and a second, and if it goes to leadership and associates, um, we're going to work out the timeline at the phase one meeting. But I really don't want to see that phase one meeting happen at the very earliest before our regular board meeting in August, which is August 23rd, at the very earliest. And reasoning for that is our students, our staff isn't returning till mid-August, our full staff, those that are our seasonal employees that are off on summer vacation. I don't think it's fair to them. I, I did mention that at the previous meeting about at the university, we wouldn't even do something like this at this time when the bulk of our employment employees are out on vacation. So the very earliest I would like to see that um, the phase one meeting take place would be the August 23rd meeting or even the September, the first meeting in September. I'd have to look at my calendar to quote what date that is. Um, I think that's, is that the 6th or is it the 13th? Um, whatever date that is. That's your job to know that. Um, <laughs> so that's just, um, I know, the 13th. So I know we already have a first and the second. I don't know that we can amend it to that, but, um, I'd really like to emphasize that. It's also going to help our new superintendent. We're gonna only barely have our first meeting with our new interim superintendent on the 26th. Um, so it sort of gets time for that. So I would hope that part of the process could be respected and that you know we could all hear to that because as far as agenda setting committee meeting goes, I'm only one um, there. So I just wanted to make that point here. And when I'm also talking about that community involvement, as part of this process, because we are such a large district geographically, which also we have so many different students that we service and different needs in different areas, I think it's important that we have some maybe community sessions 
you know, one that's in Aptos, Aptos based, one that's in Watsonville, that's Watsonville based. And for goodness sakes, North Monterey County. I mean, it's always just considered that North Monterey County could just attend Watsonville, but I think it's really important that we have community sessions, at least in those three areas as part of this process. So I just wanted to sort of add that and echo I support, I don't even know if Nellie's still here, oh yeah, she is. Um, that I really do support that and believe the importance of that um, to have a rich involvement from our community and all our stakeholders. Trustee Dice Jr. I'd also like to say I support the um, motion for leadership and associates. Um, just to kind of echo what Trustee Acosta was saying that the search needs to be held throughout the district of the community, you know, through the city of Watsonville. You know, Trustee Acosta talks about us being stewards of, you know, the people that we, 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 we represent, represent. And um, the only reason I'm here because I, I, I told the people that they should make, they should be making decisions. You know, I, I'm just here to the people that are afraid to speak or who feels like their voice isn't being heard, um, I want them to be able to part of this decision. You know, Watson, Ohio, E. Hall, Mini White, Radcliffe, you know, whatever decision we go to, to kind of echo what Trustee Acosta was saying, you know, hopefully we can have, you know, a meeting or a hearing at Aptos High School, Pajaro Valley High School, Watson, High School, and, you know, Trustee Soto's area. I mean, you know, we had a, a once in a century flood and, you know, there was a, you know, there was a lot of miscommunication, you know, I'm not sure if that's a good way to say between, in, you know, Monterey County, Pajaro Valley Unified School District and they shouldn't be involved. Um, you know, even if it's at the golf course or, you know, Hall School, that's, that's part of our district and that's part of our communities. Um, a, a lot of our, our, our workers, our teachers live in Monterey County, uh, Las Lomas. Um, Pajaro, and hopefully wherever we decide, we can have something in Monterey County for the people of Monterey County. So, thank you. Trustee Scow? Yes, thank you. Um, I also um, want to thank both of our uh, proposals and both organizations. I, I also like the leadership proposal as well. And uh, I won't make a long speech, but I do think it is important. Um, one of the reasons I think we chose Murray is because of his depth of experience in our district and also the region, by the ways, and so I think it's valuable to get his input uh, in a collaborative way on this process as well and, and not rush it. Thank you. All right. Yeah, I also want to thank both firms for coming up to bat and putting your irons in the fire and, and obviously uh, we feel that we've made a decision and you know the the firm that's uh, being mentioned already has some previous experience with us, and they're familiar with somewhat of our procedures and policies. So I mean that that's always a plus. Uh, Trustee Dodge, thank you for mentioning my area. You know they they always seem to get recognized as the stepchild of the district, which is unfortunate. And um, you know, uh, it's it's good that we do get them involved because you know that's somewhat of a community that's kind of kind of sits back and just watches but really doesn't participate and I think we need to start bringing them into the light and get them involved so thank you for recognizing that thank you trustee 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 he, he's just noting that I mentioned your area first <laughs> trustee Desert. thank you trustee Acosta and trustee Dodge well, um, so I've been, I have been through this before and, um, and I've seen the process play out and um, search firms are expert at um, talking to us, getting our input and running these types of searches. They, this is what they do. Um, I, we, I don't, I mean, I know everyone's talking about giving directives for how it's gonna go. They already know how it goes and they are um, experts at bringing in different portions of our community um, based on our feedback, so I'm, I, um, I'm confident that you guys, that this board will enjoy working with this, um, with either one of the search firms and 
um, to the satisfaction of um, what our desire and wishes are for how to get the best person that we can possible to be our next superintendent. Um, I think they should start tomorrow on this process. I don't think we should wait until September. I think we're going to miss out on many good candidates that will get swooped up by other um, districts. And so um, the, the sooner they can get started, the better. So I wouldn't be very opposed to waiting into September to start this process. Thank you. All right. So we have a first and a second. Yes. Uh, home. I have a clarification. Um, I thought I heard Trustee De Deserpa second the motion, but then I did you say you had seconded Trustee Acosta? Because I thought I heard. Oh, I'm sorry. So I just wanted to well, clarify that I did hear Trustee Deserpa second yeah. the motion. <laughs> okay. Thank so you. So I have a first and a second for improving the contract with Leadership and Associates. And we're, uh, we, 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 the, called it. we roll called it. We're doing a roll call. Trustee De Serpa? Aye. Trustee Flores? Aye. Trustee Soto? Aye. Trustee Scow? Aye. Trustee Dodd Jr.? Aye. Vice President Acosta? Aye. And President Holm? Aye. The motion passes unanimous. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Motion carries seven zero. <laughs> All right, moving on to item eight point three, California School Employees Association Chapter one thirty two Sunshine Proposal for twenty twenty three, twenty twenty four, reopener year to the Pajaro Valley Unified School District. The report will be presented by Allison Miyazawa, our Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources. Yes, thank you, President Home Board of Trustees and Mr. Rucker. Um, so I have the Sunshine Proposal from CSCA to open up negotiations for the 23-24 school year. Um, it is a reopener year, which is why you're only seeing one school year, and they are requesting to um, sunshine those four, four articles. So I respectfully request that you approve their Sunshine Proposal. Thank you. Do we have any public speakers to this item? We have none. Do we have any discussion from the board? I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. We have a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 7-0. Are there any items to report from closed session? Yes, there are. <clears throat> so, let me just make sure. Yes. So on um, closed session item 2.2, I move to approve the certificated personnel report as presented by district administration on July 12, 2023, with 24 and seven additional action items, and I will need a second. Second. No first and a second, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 601. On closed session item 2.3, I move to approve the classified personnel report as presented by district administration on July 12, 2023, with zero and 16 additional action items. I need a second. We have first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Motion carries 601. And we have um, two announcements out of closed session. Announcement one, Pajara Valley Unified School District is pleased to announce the selection of Louise Burnside as a new program director of special education. Louise has been working with students since 2023, excuse me, 2003 in a variety of settings. She has been an, alter, an alternative programs teacher, a special education teacher, a county office of education coordinator of special services, a program director, and most recently an assistant principal at Leland High School. Louise holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Geography from Queen's University in Belfast, Northern Ireland, as well as a UK teacher's license from Goldsmiths College in London, England. She obtained her special education credential through the Santa Cruz County Office of Education 
and holds a master's degree of education and an administrative credential from National University. We are excited to welcome Louise back to PWUSD into her new role. Welcome, Louise. And our second and last announcement, uh, Pajaro Valley Unified School District is pleased to announce the selection of Rosamond Vivo as the principal of Landmark Elementary. Rosamond has been working with students since 2002 when she worked with junior college students in Sinaloa, Mexico at the Instituto Tecnológico de los Moches. Since 2005, she has been part of PBUD, PBUSD working in roles such as classroom teacher, new teacher project mentor, summer school principal, and academic coordinator at Rio Del Mar. She holds a Bachelor's of Arts in History and Language, a Master's of Education, and a multiple subject teaching credential with a BC lad and all from UCSC. She has also earned an administrative credential from CSUMB. We are excited to welcome Rosalind to her new role, Go Dragonflies. Welcome, Rosalind. <laughs> and that is all I have. All right. Um, so our next meeting is a regular board meeting on July 26th. And with that, the meeting is adjourned at 7.52 p.m.